bringing hope, equipping lives, affecting destiny.
merciful. You are kind. You are merciful. Unquestionable God, you are. Oh, we bless you. We bless you from the depth of our hearts. Who is like unto you, God? Who is like unto you, God? Thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, I am Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless the Lord, oh my soul, for January, bless the Lord. For February, bless the Lord. I la consola la dia manena. In su talia manene de osolie na na. De la mano de la de la de la de la de la de la de
are the reason why we are still on our two feet. We worship you this morning, Lord. We adore you, Lord. Without you, where we will have been. Without your help, we will have remained as blessed. Without you as our hope for a better tomorrow, our lives will have remained hopeless. But you are the leader of our heads, the one that opposed us by its right hand of righteousness. Say to it that we are above the waters of life. Say to me that death by the battles of our lives, you have not allowed any to overwhelm us. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are great. Lord, you are beautiful. Sing a new song to the Lord this morning. In your own way. In the best way you know how to do it. Sing new melodies of to him this morning. As they shed the wind, as they win the shade. Yes. Yeah. 
know how to manage their lives and who have kept to the dictates of the ethics of living, Lord, they have died. People that are very close to you, Lord, they have died. <laughs> We are still on this earth planet. It's not because we are good. It's not because we are sinless. It has been you. And so we are here this morning to give you glory. To give you honor. Give you adoration. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me In the 
because of the prayer that I said, I said, going by the happenings in the course of the first half of the year, God has confirmed to me and to almost everybody over and over again that a life outside of Jesus' presence is a life lived in futility. Because the futility of life of this age is all around us, it can be seen, it is visible, it is touchable, it is not hidden. Unfortunately, and the truth of it is this, what is there in this world None can last forever. But we live as if there's no, there won't be end. There's no work of a man that can last forever. There's nothing that has ever been invented, that has lasted forever. And there is nothing permanent and solid forever in this world. So let us know for sure that this life is not the main game. It is just a taste of what is possible. <coughs> the main game in this life is Jesus. And if there's any message <coughs> that I will love to pass across to us, It is very simple. Let each and every one of us, let us look in the world. Let us do a reassessment of our lives. Let us reevaluate our lives. Let us review our lives. And be a judge to yourself. The whole world can deceive, but I know only a fool will deceive himself. The word of God tells us in the book of Hebrew, chapter 1, verse 10 and 12. See, and you, Lord, in the beginning, laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will all perish, but you alone will remain. So, in other words, even the things that God made, we do what? We perish. <coughs> Only God will remain. He said, they will all 
grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up and they will be changed. But you, God, you are the same and your years will never fail. Common sense therefore dictates that if God is the only one that will remain, it is better to do what? To realign ourselves to this God. He has given us time to make a choice in this world and particularly at this time. And each and every one of us, we have to make that choice. And I believe that this is the purpose, this is the reason why God has kept you and me. That is the reason why we have not lost our sanity despite the hardship. All over, globally. That is the reason why We are still covered despite our nakedness. That is the reason, people of God, why you and me can be here this morning. If there is any call that God is making to us this second half of 2023, it's a call to make just one decision. And the decision is after reviewing, after reassessing. <coughs> After re-evaluating, after re-examining our lives individually, we need to decide whether we want to really follow Jesus Christ. It goes beyond coming to the church people of God. It goes beyond knowing some scriptures and having the ability to quote of it. It goes beyond being able to worship and sing. It goes beyond being good in making speeches. All those things also will perish. Only God will remain. <coughs> so as we launch ourselves into this new face. I want us to please be on our feet 
just a single prayer just a single prayer When we discover, when we are in conformity with the dictates of the scripture, we are on the right path of becoming Christ-like. But we need also to discover the principles of God. And there are many that makes life the principles of God that we make life very pleasant that we make our Christian journey very fruitful until we engage those principles you can still be a Christian and still be barren I'm not talking of the physical womb barren. I'm talking of when one, when one's life is barren. And that's not to show for it. So I just want us to pray, Lord, this second half of 2023, help me to walk in conformity to your dictates and illuminate my heart that I may discover and engage the, your principles that this life may not be hard for me. I do not want to be barren, Lord. I want to be fruitful. Let this second half, O oh Lord, let it be fruitful as I engage, as I make up my mind to walk in the light of the Lord and I gain the principles obediently. that God will help you and help me to walk circumspectly that we will be more than the era of his world but rather we be doers of his world Lord, we have tasted the world and we have tasted you. And according to your words, see and know that God is good. Lord, we have tasted you. We know that you are good. We know that you are good. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed Father as a people we want to say thank you once again thank you for bringing us to the second half of 2023 you are the shepherd of our soul We profess it, 
we confess it to Lord. And we know, Lord, that as sheep, we don't have any horn to defend ourselves. As our shepherd, you alone can defend. As sheep, Lord, we cannot fend for ourselves. As our shepherd, you alone can fend for you, our provider. Lord, as flocks in your vineyard, we cannot protect ourselves. From everlasting to everlasting, you alone is the protector. Our lives are in your hands. Both young and old, we submit everything at your feet. We ask that you will have your way, even in our lives, as we sojourn and navigate through this second hour. <laughs> Let it be peaceful with us, Lord. Encompass us, O oh Lord, with your blessings. Lead us by your right hand of righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Steal every troubled water of our lives. Silence the adversary, Lord, for our sake. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Take your seat. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're happy to be in the first Sunday of the second half of the year, I want you to shout a thunder for Hallelujah. Our assignment is to lead us into giving our offering and our tithe. So I want us to leave our hands in our pockets. And for those of us who will be giving our tithe and our offering through the banks, uh, we already have the bank code <coughs> on the screen. And for those of us who will be using the envelopes, uh, please let's give our offering. But as you're giving your offering and your tithe, I want us to consider this scripture. The book of Leviticus chapter 25, 23, verse 24. The Bible said, God told Moses, speak to the children of Israel, that the seven months shall be observed as a Sabbath of rest. Brethren, we are in the seventh month of the year. As we are giving that offering, I want you to lift your voice unto God and tell you to God, say, Father, in obedience to your word, bringing the tithe unto you and giving the offering in this month, let this month be a month of rest for me. Let me experience financial rest. Let me experience marital rest. Let me experience career rest. In every area of my life, for the remaining part of this year, let me experience rest. The Bible said in verse 41 of that scripture, He said you shall observe this as a festival of celebration, that the seventh month shall be a mark of his festival of celebration. I want you to lift your voice, voice unto God and tell you to God, say, Father, for the remaining half of this year, let me experience celebration in the mighty name of Jesus. Let my life experience celebration in the mighty name of Jesus. Let my career experience celebration in the mighty name of Jesus. Let my home experience celebration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. 
what the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. Oh, 
cousins, Narafa, God has been good to us because even in everything, God is making us aware of His presence, of Him being with us in everything. So I've come back to say thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I want every one of us to rise on our feet and sing this song to honor Jesus. Jesus must be heard, must be heard, must be heard. in the redeemed Christian Church of God that our leaders must be appreciated. And there are so many ways they can be appreciated. One of it is what I want to do now. I want us to stretch our hands to our daddy. Stretch everyone in this assembly right now. Stretch your hands to our pastor. Stretch your hands to our mommy. The two of them. Just stretch your hands for them. Just pray you because I want you to pray for them. Our brother prayed earlier and said this is the month of rest. I want you to decree concerning our pastor and our mommy that God will grant them rest. He will grant them rest. It will grant them rest. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will release rest unto the apostle. In the mighty name of Jesus, as they walk in the vineyard of God Almighty, as they spend their time, their efforts, their talents, the anointing that God has given unto them in His vineyard, God Almighty will grant unto them peace. Go ahead, decree peace for their home, that the peace of God will sojourn in their household. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want us to decree that as the pastors or the pastors who continue to use the anointing God has given us to them for the improvement, for the edification of the house of God, the vineyard of God, they have lost to never fall to the ground. In the mighty name of Jesus, as they continue to walk in the vineyard of God, God will lift them up. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, decree that they will decree that God will increase in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to pray for their families so close and extended. Pray that the joy of God will not see, the rejoicing of God will not see in their household. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
Brethren, some of us are not praying. And just because as you pray for them, you are praying for yourself. Decree, decree, decree that as they are going more gracefully, going more gracefully, they will never spend the rest of their lives in the sickness. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Decree that the favor of God, the favor of God will flow them like garment. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. that you have given unto them to lead, they will not lose any of us. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. I cancel death in this assembly Amen. going forward. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. I say there shall be no death, Amen. whether physical, spiritual, psychological, Amen. in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's just go up. Appreciate them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. 
promissory note of what is to come. That's why I'm asking someone to read it for me. Um, but uh, beginning from verse 12, please, um, I want you to follow the story very well because I've just been making some uh, about one or two. because our time is fast spent. I just want to uh, uh, encourage us that as we as we again start to navigate through the second half that we should we should trust in God's providence however painful the journey might have been so far, however pleasant it might have been so far. Whatever may be your story so far, as we start the second our trust in the providence God. So please help me read from verse 12 through 36. It's a long read. But please, I just want you to be attentive. It's a story that you know, you know very well. Hallelujah. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are not your mothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, Here I am. Then he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks, and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him, and there he was, wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying, What are you seeking? So he said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. A certain man found him. Go ahead, please. And the man said, They have departed from here, for I heard them say, Let us go to Jotham. <coughs> so Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Jotham. Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, Look, this dreamer is coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say, Some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, or cast him into this pit which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him, that he might be delivered him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass, when Joseph had come to his brothers, that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colours that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty, there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites, coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm and mire, on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? 
Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. Let us sell him. Is our brother. Or let us sell him. Right. And his brothers listened. Then the Midianites traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben re returned to the pit. And indeed, Joseph was not in the pit. And he tore his clothes, and he returned to his brothers and said, The Lord is no more, and I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted, and he said, For I shall go down into the grave to, to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Now the Midianites had sold him, in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and the captain of the guard. Thank you. I pray that you, none of us, will have any customer. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. No more over your son. Amen. No more over your daughters. Amen. You won't have any cause to win. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God's providence. If you have your pen, just write this down. God's providence asserts that God is in complete control of all things. God is in complete and full control of all things. His providence carries God's plan, His plans into action and marshals all things towards the ultimate goal regardless of the route, regardless of the process, which at times may be painful, which at times may be hazardous, which at times may be confusing. There is a lady, probably you have heard about her, Johnny Erickson, Tada, the lady that got paralyzed at the age of 17. She dived into a shallow water and got paralyzed from shoulder down. She said, when I broke my neck and became paralyzed, I was told God was sovereign over every detail of that fateful day. But I did not grasp His providence until I saw how it was used of God to change me. Not that, not that He was made whole, not that she was healed, She's still paralyzed up to today. As a matter of fact, she's 71 or 72 right now. And she got paralyzed at the age of 17. Right from shoulder down. But I did not grasp his providence until I saw how it was used of God to change me. How did God change her? <coughs> 
God has not healed her. And he made me blessings to hundreds of thousands of people. When I understood these blessings in my broken neck, I praise God for his providence. The passage that was read to us is the story of Joseph. More than Abraham, more than Isaac, more than Jacob. Joseph occupies a very large proportion in the book of Genesis, more than his forefathers. And if you look at the story very well, you will agree with me that Joseph came from a dysfunctional family. Abraham was dysfunctional. You know the story of Abraham very well. You know the story of Isaac very well. Isaac preferred Esau to Jacob. Rebekah preferred Jacob to Esau. As you know, all the, all, all the maneuverings and manipulations, that's a dysfunction as a family, isn't it? And you know the story of uh, Jacob himself very well. And this story, for whatever reason, he happened to be the eleventh child of Jacob, but born by the wife of, of his youth. Because he, he was manipulated to marry Leah. So he preferred Joseph to the ten others. And because of the dysfunctionality in that family, he did hide it as a father. The Bible tells us that he sold for him tunics, designer suits, our shoes of different what? Different colors. So nothing was hidden from his brothers. They became envious. Envy graduated to hatred. Hatred graduated to wanting to do what? To finish him. I'm still wondering because Jacob was very much aware of this hatred. I'm still wondering why Jacob will send him to go and look for his brothers. But providence of what? Of God. I've preached on this story before, but we look at it more from the back end of the story. How from prison, Joseph was translated to the palace and he became what? He became uh, the prime minister. His dream coming true. Coming true at last. And how he said to his brothers that it was not you, that it was God that sent, that sent me ahead of you. Not only that he said, you made it for evil, but God made it for good. But front end of the story, there are many coincidences. Many coincidences that they weren't palatable. They weren't palatable. First, he happened to be 
the child of Jacob's old age, preferred by his, by his father, He was sent out to go and look for them. Why? Like I said, only God can explain that, but it is the providence of God. That man that was mentioned, that he met at Shechem, assuming that he did not see that man, That man that was mentioned, how did he hear the discussion of the brothers of Joseph that they were leaving Shechem to Dotha? How come that they saw him from afar without him seeing them? And so they were able to plan to do what? To kill him. Because if he had seen them afar and was able to see their body language, the likelihood that he will go back is very high, isn't it? Yes. But they saw him first, he didn't see them, and so they were able to hatch a plan to kill him. How come that Reuben took it upon himself the responsibility? to deliver him from his brother's hand and yet something moved him out so that that act would be perpetrated. How come that Reuben was so disturbed he tore his clothes and yet Reuben was caused by his father? How come that it was when Reuben was away? By the way, when they threw him to the pit, the Bible says that they did what they were eating. Can you see how bitterness can degenerate? You put your brother inside the pit waterless pit where there were scorpions, snakes and the likes like that and you set you for what? For lunch <clears throat> and how come that scorpion did not bite him? How come snake did not bite him? How come? <clears throat> how come that these Amalekites who happened to be the generation of Esau? How come that they were the one that came at the right time? I call it the right time now. In order for the brother to take him from the pit. And now do what? How come Judah will say, do not let us kill him, let us sell him? What is the difference between killing and selling to slavery? Slavery is slow death. I'm still talking about the providence of God. How come that it was Egypt that they sold into? How come that it was Potiphar that took him in? And he became a slave in Potiphar's house. How come that the wife of Potiphar decided to seduce him? How come? How come that Potiphar believed the wife and so arranged the imprisonment of Joseph? How come? How come? How come that? He was able not to give up because he was still useful, not only in the household of 
Potiphar. But even when he got to prison, he was very useful. The Bible says in chapter, that, the same, uh, chapter 37, and the Lord was with him. If you read that passage very well, God was, it was measured about five times, and God was with him, and God was with him, and God was with him. How come that it took two years for the butler to remember that this man interpreted a tree for me that saved my life. How come? People of God, I want to let us know one thing. Regardless of what you are going through, regardless of what I am passing through, However unpleasant it may be, as we start this second half, let us remember that God is sovereign over our circumstances. Write it down, please. God is sovereign over our circumstances. Meaning that God is in control. We may not understand how. We may not feel it. But God is in control. And according to Romans 11 verse 36. Everything. We still. Is still intended for God's glory. So whatever you may be going through, however unpleasant it may be, is going to end up in God's glory. Who said, Master, this man has been in this condition since he was born? See, nobody said. The father did not sin. The mother did not sin. He did not do anything. Say it's God for what? For the glory of the Lord. God is sovereign over our circumstances. Even when, even if it result, if it results to death, God is still sovereign, and He will still take the glory. So I want to believe that from the beginning, ever before Joseph was born, God calculated for Joseph to experience all these things, uh, but his unseen hand stayed on the wheel of Joseph's life from start to finish. So that everything we follow God's intention for yourself. That is the story, and that is the picture I want to paint for you also. That whatever you are going through, God's hand is on the wheel of the vehicle of your life. They are not going to crash on the way. There will be an accident. Everything we had in praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. All those coincidences that I mentioned, I started to ask myself some questions. That what would have happened if Joseph had not ended up in Egypt? Definitely, he would never have been near Potiphar's house. True of us. 
if he had not ended in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife wouldn't have had the opportunity to make love, or wanted to make love, or making advances to him. And if Potiphar's wife had not tried to seduce him, he wouldn't have ended up in prison. True or false? If Joseph had not ended up in prison, he wouldn't have met Butler and Baker, like I said. True or false? Now, see how these things, see how they are playing out. If he did not interpret the dreams of Baker and the Butler, If those, sorry, if those people did not have dream, he wouldn't have had the opportunity to display his prowess, his insight as someone that understands the interpretation of dream. And if he had never interpreted their dreams, he wouldn't have been remembered later by Butler, who mentioned him to Pharaoh which led to his being brought out of prison. See God in action. If Joseph had not been brought out of prison, he will never have been able to stand before Pharaoh. And if he had not stood before Pharaoh, he never would have been able to interpret Pharaoh's dream. Brethren, if he had never interpreted Pharaoh's dream, he would never have been given the second highest position in Egypt. And if Joseph had not become Pharaoh's right hand man, no one would have been able to build the giant grain to ward off the family that he predicted. And if the family had not happened, there wouldn't be a need for the brother, for Jacob to send his brothers to Egypt. If they had not been sent to Egypt, they wouldn't have been able to meet him. If they had not been able to meet him, Jacob is father and his family would not have, they wouldn't have been able to end up in Egypt as a journey in the land of Goshen. If they had not so journey in the land of Joseph, people of God, there wouldn't have been slavery. They wouldn't have been into slavery for how many years? For 430 years. But God's providence was working at something, at a goal that knows dived into Moses being born, that knows dived into them passing through the Red Sea, that knows dived into them being fed for 40 years with manna, that knows dived it will then get into the promised land that knows that everything knows that into the coming of the Christ. The providence of God. Could it be? Could it be that what you are going through, what I've gone through, what I'm about to go through, could it be that the hand of God? Is in there. The answer is yes. From hindsight, Joseph was able to tell them, God sent me before you to preserve what? To preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So it was not you who sent me here, but what? But who? But God. The providence of God at work. The story of Joseph no doubt was a long, lonely 
a never ending dark and torturous experience but God but God and many of us must have had but God experience I was broke but God I nearly had accident but God this something nearly happened, but God. I nearly lost him, but God. I will have done this, but God. So God is very sovereign over our circumstance. So Joseph's story could be yours and it could be mine. A story teaches us one thing that everything that happens in life takes place within God's providential care. Even the evil that we experience. But that party that we read is more than the story of Joseph of God. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Joseph is just like a forerunner of Jesus Christ in the book of Genesis. And that is the providence of God in action. The story that was read to us points us not to Joseph because Joseph was secondary to the story. It points us to the author and the finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Joseph serves as a type and as a shadow of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Joseph we see Jesus who in God's sovereign providence endured the cross, despising the shame, and suffered an ignominious death. Look at the story this way. Joseph's coming was sent by his father to his brother. In John 17, verse 3, the Bible tells us that Jesus' coming was sent by God, his Father. Say, and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So Jesus was sent Joseph was sent by the father to his brothers who hated and rejected him. What about Jesus? John 11, John 1 verse 11 tells us he came to his own and his own did what? They received him not. When Joseph got to his brothers who hated him They decided to do one thing. They decided to kill him. We are told also in John chapter 11 verse 53 where Jesus Christ got to his home. The Bible says there from that day on they plotted to put him to death. Acts 2 chapter 23 uh, verse 23 also says, In being delivered by the determined purpose and for knowledge of who? Of God. You have taken by lawless and have crucified and put to death. So of Joseph, people of God, all the talkings he did in chapter 6, chapter 36 
He talked about his dreams, how he told his father and his brothers. But in chapter 37 that we read, he did not open his mouth. So also Jesus Christ, according to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers. He silent. He opened not his mouth. But unlike Jacob, the father of Joseph, who did not know this, how the story we heard, it, our God, the Alpha and the Omega, knows the beginning to the end. And he knows the end of the matter before it ever began. Listen this morning as I round up. It is not like Jesus Christ just jumped up on the cross and died. And God said, well, I didn't know that that was going to happen, but yet I will still use it for a purpose. No, Jesus Christ willingly surrendered his life. He said to us, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down for myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I do what? I have the power to take it again. In John chapter 12, verse 10, the Bible says, and this is Jesus Christ talking, and I, if I am lifted up, to the earth, I will draw people to myself. <coughs> Jesus Christ died on the cross because God, in His sovereign providence, has planned it that way for a purpose. What purpose? It is for you, it is for me. The cross was not a mistake. He died because he was predestined by the sovereign God before the foundation of the earth. But Jesus Christ did not die on the cross that was laid down because there is no saving power in such a cross. But the providence of God was to raise that cross up so that Jesus Christ could die on a lifted cross because it has been foretold that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. This morning, it is the lifted cross that is the centerpiece of our gospel. And it is what will navigate us through the second half of 2023. In its magnitude, it reveals the power of the Holy Spirit to control our lives in a way that though we may go through issues, yet we will pass through it gallantly and gloriously. The Bible tells us that there is nothing that happens to us that has never happened to man before. That the providence of God has a way of providing a way out for you and me 
even in our situation. So before you give up, before you lose hope, before I give up, before I lose hope, I want to say to us this morning that Jesus Christ has not left where he has always been. He's at the right hand of God the Father advocating for you and me so that his providence no matter how poor people it may be he may see us through God will see you through Amen. through the pains of your life he will see you through Amen. the secret tears of the night God will see you through Amen. the unbearable pain God will see you through Amen. The unnavigated on the uncharted path that you have found yourself, God will make a way for you. Yeah. And I'd like to say that this year we end up in grace. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You will still have a story to tell. Yeah. You will still have a song to sing. Yeah. And everything will bring glory to God. Yeah. God is going to change your story. God is going to change mine in the name of Jesus Christ. Like I said before, I still pray you will not have any cause to mourn. You will not mourn. I say you will not mourn in the name of Jesus Christ. Your troubled water will be still. Say, be still and know that I am God. Can we please be upstanding? <laughs> so I will know the providence of God. I want to invite us into this season's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the same thing as gratitude. Giving gratitude to God. Thank God. It is not more than this. It is possible for it to have been worse. Thank God. That you are still alive. So there is hope for you. The Bible says a living dog is better than a dead lion. Every expectation of yours for year 2023, it does not matter whether any of it has not been fulfilled. From A to Z of it, as God lives and as He has promised this house, everything will come to fulfillment yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You will take every promise of God right yeah. as having been fulfilled before that first of December. Yeah. I stand upon the authority of the word of God. He has promised me. He will never leave nor forsake. He has promised that He will be there for us no matter the situation. He says to us in the book of Isaiah chapter 43, say by reason of creation that is our God, that by reason of redemption that is our Lord, that no matter what we are going through, whether through the waters of life, he says he will be there for us. Through the rivers of life, he says he will not allow you to carry us away. Through the fires of life, he says he will not allow you to burn us. Amen. My friend, we are here from, for a great journey. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I invite you once again to a thanksgiving. 
knowing fully well that God is credible, you can thank Him, even her head. He can never fail. He has promised, He will never fail. I will follow Him, I will follow Him.
Hello. Our God is good. May the Lord continue to be good to you. Amen. A shout of rejoicing never depart from your homes. Amen. You always have cause to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. It is time for us to bring the service to a close. And I want you to close your eyes and begin to talk to the Lord concerning this month of July that as we navigate through the mighty hands of God we uphold you. The light of God will shine into your ways. As you call upon the Lord in this month of July, He will answer you. The heavens over your head will be open. Every day will launch you into the blessings of God. In this month of July, you will know no evil. You will suffer no casualty. That way the Lord has spoken concerning you, concerning your household, will come to pass in the name of Jesus. As you walk through this month of July, in the name of the Lord Jesus, anything that the enemy has meant for evil, God will turn it for you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, Father will say thank you. Lord will bless you. Father, this morning, I commit your people into your hand, and I pray that your presence will go with everyone, even in this month of July and into this second half of the year in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And I decree and I declare that may the Lord answer you in the days of trouble. Yeah. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Yeah. May he send you hell from his sanctuary yeah. and strengthen you out of Zion. Yeah. May he remember all your offerings yeah. and accept your bond sacrifice. Yeah. May he grant you according to your heart's desires yeah. and fulfill all your purposes. Yeah. Will you, will, will you, will you, you will always rejoice yeah. in the salvation of your God. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. And the name of the Lord our God will be a banner over you and your household. Yeah. May he fulfill all your petitions yeah. in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. May God save you from every atrocity yeah. of the enemy. Yeah. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. May he answer you from his holy heaven. Yeah. And his strength will uphold you. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. The scripture says some trust in chariots, some in horses. But may you remember the name of the Lord your God in the name of Jesus. Yeah. May he be a covering over your life and your home. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father will say thank you. Lord will bless you. Thank you for a good plan that you have for us in this second hour. Our eyes are on you, oh God, that you will make every situation good for us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And who will God say? Amen. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week and step into your blessings and open doors.